just gonna keep shooting this stuff because you never know what you're gonna find. Come stitch away, come stitch away, crochet away with me, oh yeah. Come stitch away, come stitch away, crochet away with me. Do you wanna have fun? Are you my friend? Do you wanna be my friend? Be my friend. Yeah. Hello makers, I'm Nicole from Woven Tales Designs and welcome back to my newest YouTube channel, Crochet Chronicles. Creativity, crocheting, and all things yarn are some of my biggest passions in life. And I'm always dreaming up the next big project, one thing after the next. So, why don't you come with me? I think you'll have a lot of fun. Let's see what I'm making next. All right makers, hello and welcome to episode two of season one of Crochet Chronicles. Thank you for coming back on board with me and watching my YouTube channel, Crochet Chronicles. I really appreciate it. And for anybody that was there for the first episode starting last month, I really appreciate it. Um, this has been a pipe dream for me. I love YouTube and I like I like being a part of entertainment, whether it's on stage where I work at Walt Disney World or if it's just like amongst my friends or just, I like being a part of the entertainment aspect of any kind of situation. So this to me has been a really long time coming and I'm really excited that you guys have continued to stay and join me on this journey. So you are probably wondering, Nicole, what are you gonna do next? You just did an Eeyore skillet handle cover and it was cute and it was functional and it was a quick little project, so what's your next move? Well, um, my next move is to continue in the line of the domestic life stuff. Season one is going to be totally dedicated to domestic life and what we can create and crochet that will help with our everyday domestic needs. Because who says that we have to go out to Williams and Sonoma and buy all of the gadgets there and then our life will be fine. I find much more value and appreciation for my home life if I'm personally adding pieces to it that will make it run more smoothly. And again, that's a, the whole slow living aspect. You know, you get more out of life when you take a step back and get away from like the crazy grid we have out there and you just create yourself something that is meaningful and ha you have memories with it and you always appreciate things more when you spend time with them. So that's this whole season one is kind of dedicated to finding things that we can make that will make our life a little brighter, a little more fun, and obviously more fun. So I wanted to come up with something that was protective of the clothes and what else does that but a kitchen apron. I like aprons because uh, they can be stylish. They always protect your clothes and I don't know, they kind of just like set you in that mood to cook and make some dinner or in case like you're someone like me and like flour seems to just attack you when you're baking, it's very necessary. I was going through different characters with them among Disney and I was, of course, every project I do, there's a Disney side to it and then there's a non-Disney side to it. The apron is going to be inspired by something that Something that's a little unexpected, I am creating an apron that is inspired by Buzz Lightyear's alter ego, Mrs. Nesbitt. If you guys remember this part in the movie, Buzz Lightyear is having the ultimate identity crisis and he's literally losing his mind because he had his arm tore out of his socket, he's been hijacked by Sid, his best friend Woody is like, you're a toy! And so like his world's been shattered, he's been given a truth bomb and he can't handle it. And then he's taken to this little girl's room and basically remade into this tea time girl, she got all the tea kind of character, Mrs. Nesbitt. So I love this concept of Buzz Lightyear going through this personal journey and trying to figure out who he actually is. I feel like we can all relate to that. And because sometimes for me, like crochet helps me figure out that next question of like, where am I going in life? Who do I want to become? Like kind of helps me guide my thoughts. You know, it's a very meditative craft. Well, without further ado, guys, I have talked plenty. I'm sure you're like, get on with the show. Let's move on to our first step of our design process. And that is our visualization process. I'm going to hand you now over to my favorite self, my voiceover self. Enjoy. It is time.
time for the visualization step of this process. Now, this step is just as important for me as a maker as the hunt for the yarn is. I am a visual learner, so seeing it down on paper before I go to the store, before I start playing around with yarn is very, very important. Um, I do have to, do, to give you guys a disclaimer. I don't have the correct colors to represent the colors that I'm searching for. With my Crayola Super Tip markers, I'm just limited in that section of my art supplies. So um, we'll correct that when we get to the store, but just know that these are just representative. They are not a literal what I'm trying to find in the store. So um, especially that waistband, that's gonna be a medium pink. The main color is going to be a very pale light pink and that heart is going to be a hot pink. For some reason, I don't have those colors. I just don't know why. But anyway, I hope to use a very special stitch I've been researching for this project. It's called the Alpine Stitch and it is beautifully textured with double crochet, single crochets, front post double crochets. It's very pretty, so if you haven't seen it yet, look it up, but you're gonna see me use it later on when I get to the trial and error portion of this process. Um, oh, and a fun fact that I learned about reading up on Buzz Lightyear's character, the, his role was actually offered to Billy Crystal back in the day, and Billy turned it down, guys. But later on, when the movie was the highest grossing movie of 1995, he claimed it was the biggest mistake of his career. Wow, talk about regrets. Well, anyway, we live and learn, guys. Later on, he also got to voice Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. So I think he actually came out on top. So hopefully we can find what we need in the store and let's move on to the hunt, y'all. Alright guys, so we are at our first stop. Um, I decided to go to Joanne Fabrics this time. Um, I do love me some Hobby Lobby, but I do like to change it up every now and then. So since the last place we went to was Hobby Lobby, I decided that we can go to Joanne's this time. But disclaimer, because I can't remember if this is the Joanne's that I like to go to or not in West Palm Beach. Um, there's one in Wellington and then there was one on North Lake Boulevard. I really can't remember which one it is that I like to go to. So let's hope that this is the right one. One has a lot more stock than the other. So either way, we're gonna search and see what we find. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> It says, do not enter. I'm already forgetting the rules. <laughs> I don't think this is the one I like to go to, but we're gonna check anyway. 
So just to give a rundown of our shopping list, um, we are looking for four shades of pink. The pink challenge, we'll call this one the pink challenge, okay? So four shades of pink, we need a hot shade of pink, kind of like a raspberry hot shade of pink, we need a light pink, we need a pale pink, and we need a carnation pink. So hopefully we find everything we need, probably in a worsted weight is what we're looking for today. Let's get shopping. Oh, also we're trying to look for something in more of like the acrylic range just because acrylics are easier to wash. So for this, since it's a um, an apron, we want it to easily be washed, yeah. Okay, so already walking down the aisle, like I see this like everyday premiere by, who's this by? By premiere, I guess. Um, it's okay, it's a medium weight. It's a nice bright pink, um, but I don't know if that's what we want yet. So we're gonna put it in our basket for comparison. Also, I found a brand of the Lion brand jeans. This is super bright. I mean, look at this pink. Oh wow, against my skin tone, I think yes. I think yes. What do you think? I think yes. <laughs> so we're gonna put this one in the cart for comparison. Uh, right now I'm with the Simply Soft Karen brand yarn and I love this brand because it's so resilient. I mean, I've washed and washed and washed several of my makes using this yarn, like throwing it in the wash, not even like gentle or like, like washer dryer, severe washing and it holds. So I'm gonna look at a couple of these colors here. They have, okay, so they have a hot pink one, yeah. This one is called Watermelon. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ah, that's nice. So I like that one. So we're gonna put that aside. We're gonna look at the other ones here. They have, oh, and I actually use this one for one of my designs in my shop already. I use this one for Rapunzel. This one is called Soft Pink. Oh, it's soft. And it's simply soft. So it's soft two times, yeah. Um, so we'll put that one aside. And then they also have down here, um, what is this? Ooh, this is nice. This is a medium. It's called strawberry. In French, it's fraise or, um, or fresa. So we have these three. So I'm going to throw these in the cart for comparison. We'll find a quiet place in the store to kind of try to lay these out and see what um, we can use in the long run. So let's keep looking for all the pinks. Okay, so I'm now in the baby aisle. Yes. The baby aisle is like my secret weapon. When I'm looking for like a color and I can't find it, I forget that the baby yarns always have very, very good colors. And it looks like they have a great pink color, but unfortunately the softy baby is a lightweight yarn and I'm looking for that worsted weight yarn. So I'm not gonna go to it, but there it is. If you wanna see it. Look at how pretty that soft pink is, but like I said, not gonna work for today. Um, they also have, um, Burnett Baby Coordinates. I don't know why that's an interesting name, Coordinates. Um, and I love that it has like a small satin striping in it. Um, but again, that is a lightweight yarn and we are looking for that worsted weight, so no go here. Um, okay, Lion Brown Pound of Love. That would actually work. Um, so I'm gonna pick that up and put that in the cart. There you are, big boy. Wow, big. Big, big. Okay, so I changed my mind. I forgot that the stitch that I'm wanting to use stitch is textured. So going with a lightweight yarn, a uh, category three, is actually probably not a bad idea just so it doesn't get too bulky and um, drapes a little bit better. So I'm gonna pick up that baby yarn that I was talking about earlier, the, uh, this one. The Burnout Softy Baby. I don't know if I pan that so you can see it well enough, but I think we're gonna go with that one for the main one. So I'm gonna grab two of those and then we're gonna lay out the other colors just to kind of see which ones will work with the rest. Just notice this on the wrap label of the skein for that baby yarn. Like, what the heck? I've never seen that before. Is that how you're supposed to do it? Take the label off, squish it, pull from center? Is that how you're supposed to do it? 
I don't know. Um, Bernat, you're kind of smart. So didn't realize that that was a thing until now. Cool. So I'm pretty happy with my lineup I just found here. So we're gonna pan down to these guys again. Okay, so for this lineup, I'm thinking that, yes, definitely going with that baby yarn that I was talking about earlier, the one that I originally put back, the lightweight yarn. So going with that, then I think I'm going to go with, for the middle, for the straps, and for like that medium tone pink, I'm going to go with, what was it? Strawberry. Oh, yes. Fizz. Strawberry. So I'm going to go with that. And then I think for that hot pink color, I'm kind of like torn between the jeans, line brand jeans yarn, and the Simply Soft Watermelon color. Okay, and the winner is, because I put them back together as a whole trio, instead of just leaving them kind of grouped off. These guys! Look at how cute they are! I think it'll be better because there none of these are striated and even though I love the striation in the jeans yarn, I think for some reason it just didn't click with me and my heart sang when I saw these back together again. So this is our three colors of pink that we're choosing and we're sticking with. We're gonna choose these and we're gonna go with it and it's gonna be great. I'm so excited. Yay! All right, let's put them in the cart. about to make it to the register when I found these adjustable strap bar thingies or like rectangles with like a little bar in the center so I'm gonna get a couple of those I'm gonna buy them on Amazon but they have them here which is awesome so I'm gonna grab these and these will help me also determine how wide to make the straps around the neck so yay found those here they are Alrighty, I love when I get myself a one-stop shop. What up, Joann's? <laughs> I don't know, do I sound like Brad Boy? She's so cute, look at Joann's. Oh! Okay, let me cross the street now. <laughs> that was a fun trip, so now it's time to head home and it's time for me to get myself a crocheting and stay tuned for some confession cans. I'm trying to do a little more, more behind the scenes, not just to jump right all the way until the part where I actually just remake it. So. have gathered our materials and we have got our visualization down in front of us we are seeing what we have in store um, and let's talk about what happens when I took the materials and the visuals and blended them together and tried to come up with this apron guys this was a fun project for me actually um, I always have moments of frustrations, but I'm not gonna lie, like I always really, really enjoy myself when I'm designing something. And I don't know if right now it's really fun because, you know, I haven't really worked with anybody else but myself. So I'm just having fun on the island I call me, and I'm having a great old time making what I make. So the hook size for this project, I decided to go with a 4.0 millimeter hook for this. Um, I did post something on Instagram in my stories where I kind of did a little poll and I asked you guys which, you, which swatch you liked better and it was actually a very tight poll. It was like I think 56% liked the 4.0 millimeter 
hook swatch and I'm glad it bent in that direction because that was the direction I was going for. I also haven't really used 4.0 millimeter hooks in a lot of projects so I was happy to come back to it because it is a nice little hook size. It kind of it kind of blends between it can make your worsted weight stitches tighter or it can make your lightweight stitches perfectly flat or lay perfectly. Um, so I like 4.0 millimeter hooks a lot and I'm glad I was able to use them for this project. So you're seeing me use an aluminum hook with a ergonomic handle and the reason for that is that I just don't trust myself anymore because I, when I'm making these videos, I'm still learning a lot. I'm still a little frantic so I just want to have hook safety and to protect my hooks and save them for when I'm more relaxed and not so um, edgy because I get really edgy, really edgy really quickly, um, especially when I'm on a deadline because of course I'm a crazy maker and I just make ridiculous deadlines for myself that I don't need to make because I don't have anybody being like, hey, we need this pattern out by the 14th of April. Like I don't have anyone behind me yelling at me to get stuff done. So the first section of this project, we start with the waistband portion of the pattern. Now, when I was first jerry-rigging this and figuring out the parts and pieces and how to add them to each other, I actually started with the top of the apron first, but when I went to make the waistband, I realized when connecting the two, I needed to use a certain style and a certain stitch um, of joining, I had to, flip-flop that process when filming because I realized the waistband was essential before I made anything else. So the first thing I did was create this waistband and with the straps attached to it. Now this takes forever. Um, once again, it is 1.30 in the morning. It is April 14th slash 15th because um, it's like 1.30 in the morning and I finally um, figured out the length and crocheted out the waistband middle part of the apron, the one that ties around your waist. Um, and I'm so tired, but I really hope this works and I don't have to remake it because it consists of so many stitches. And I did good math on it, I think. Um, so I'm really hoping this works because if it doesn't, I guess there'll be another confession cam. <laughs> anyway, I am tired, I look tired, and I'm excited to see how the next part folds out because that will determine how well this went. So this project, I had to deal with that with the waistband, whatever, it's not perfect, but um, the waistband took a long time. It's like a total of 325 chains to start. And then you're doing like all these rows of single crochet back and forth. Um, so that did take quite a, quite a good amount of time. The waistband, I'm glad I figured that out to create that first. Um, and I think it turned out pretty well. I used for this one the Simply Soft uh, Karen yarn, I believe it was, in the color Strawberry. I love that color. Oh my gosh, it's like a beautiful warm medium pink and it gives you so, I don't know, do you ever just look at a color and you feel like it's smiling at you? I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I really enjoyed this particular color to blend with the soft pink. I think those two colors together look super, super well. Karen Simply Soft is a very, I use this yarn for stuff in my Etsy shop. They have such a wide range of colors that I usually can find something very close to what I'm looking for when I go visit that line of yarn. So I used the strawberry yarn, it was great, and I had a great time with it, and um, the stitch definition is great with it. Um, sometimes you do have to worry a little bit about the splitting of the yarn because since the yarn is twisted in a different way for knitters, when you go to crochet, it doesn't work so much. Um, sometimes it splits. So I did have, find uh, some splitting happening with this, but when I used the aluminum hook versus the Furls crochet hook, um, there wasn't as much splitting because the aluminum hook had a much smoother um, hooky part of the hook. Um, yeah, so I liked it. I liked making this waistband. It was durable, it was very long, and the full length of this waistband um, was about 72 inches? Yeah, 
I think so. Working with this Alpine stitch, you guys, has been a total treat. I love texture and I love working with stitches that have alternating different types of stitches. Sometimes, like, if I find a pattern that I really like and I'm like, oh, I wanna make this so bad and I start making it, if it doesn't have enough variation in the type of stitch, I get so bored. And I don't know if that's because I'm more, my brain is more like inclined to be a designer when it comes to crocheting or what, but I get very ADD with patterns. So the Alpine stitch for me is perfect because you have, you're working with double crochet and you're working with single crochet. You're working with front posts, you're working with um, wrong side and right side. And when I had to learn, I basically couldn't find a video that taught kind of showed you or gave you help on how to increase or decrease. Um, so I kind of actually, this is where my design brain kicked in for this project. So I have a little bit of shaping that went into making the top part of the apron as well as the beginning of the skirt of the apron. Um, and it was just very subtle, very easy, um, but I did um, have a great time learning how to work with that and manipulate that. I loved using the 4.0 millimeter hook with this, with the stitch. I think it, the tighter stitches worked really well with it because it, it was an interwoven type of stitch. And I think it turned out really nicely. That softy baby yarn, guys, is just a dream to work with. Had an actual, like, a bounce back to it. Do you ever, like, make a stitch and then, like, the, the yarn kind of, like, bounces a little bit back? from where you just pulled it. Oh, I love it, I love it. I also am a type of crochet, I don't know if you can tell from the video, but I am a yanker. I, I think that's the word for it. I feel like that sounds like a derogatory term, but um, <laughs> I'm a yanker, so I'll pull up a loop and then I'll yarn over and pull through my loops, but when I do that, I always kind of like yank a little bit extra yarn to make my stitches tighter. I like tight stitches. I'm not a loose crocheter at all. So if you're someone that is that way, let me know in the comments below. I feel like I'm one of few. I'm a tighter crocheter. I probably should be an emigurumi artist, but for some reason, I just, that's not my thing. So I have emigurumi tension with regular projects and um, I'm constantly working with my tension, y'all, so. Oh, guys, and I have to tell you, I, I think I hit a record with frogging. <laughs> It's like one in the morning and I did a lot of work today and I think I frogged this already on day one of working on this maybe six times. Um, mainly just because I'm just trying to figure out the scale of this. Um, this is one of the biggest pieces I've ever created because I'm just used to creating um, ear warmer headbands and fingerless gloves and coffee cases. So, um, it was a good learning curve tonight. I'm gonna take what I have, and it's all been written down. Um, the pattern sequencing will not change, but I do need to start from the beginning again, because my initial scale that I thought I had right was way too small. So anyway, I'm tired, I'm going to bed, but I am proud of what I've done so far. It's just one of those things where you just can't control until you learn what you need to learn first. I don't know if that made any sense, but anyway. It took me a long time to figure out the length of the top of the apron and the length of the skirt. I just, for some reason, I couldn't figure it out, and I think what affected it in the end was because I realized that when you're holding up the apron with the halter part of it and the thing around your waist, it does have a stretch to it, so even when you crochet it to be like a certain amount of inches, because of gravity and the way that it's worn, it kind of like lengthens as you wear it. So I didn't want to create it too long because then it would be like dragging the floor. No one wants a ball gown apron. I mean, is that even possible? Probably and not necessary. Um, but I did have a lot of issues with the length. Um, so much so that I was even adjusting that as I was going along. And even when I was filming, I ended up having to toss out some filming footage and go back and re-crochet it because what I had thought I used was correct. So, uh, like I said, I'm, uh, again, 100% transparency. After I got through filming part of this hyperlapse to show you like how it's created in one full swoop, um, I went to go hold up the top apron, hi Kyra, <laughs> as it was connected to that waistband part. And um, after making adjustments with the length, 
it was still too long. So I had to stop what I was doing, frog my work again, which I thought this project was complete and um, I'm not gonna refilm it, but obviously this is another confession. Ugh, but I'm happy that I did it because now it looks much better and the pattern is going to be flawless. I say that now, but anyway, here's that other confession. So what you see in this hyperlapse, I wasn't able to refilm um, the process of doing it again. So what you see is what you get. Mm. And I am obviously looking very frantic right now because my hair is crazy. All right, guys, and then we are moving right along. We have, so we did the waistband, we have the top of the apron, and we immediately attached that with a really special join. I liked that I figured out this join because I felt like it was really sturdy. And then later on, um, I don't show this on camera because again, weaving in ends just take forever, but when you go to weave in your ends, I find that when you're assembling pieces together, if you leave a really long tail for weaving your ends in, it actually gives you some more security in the piece. Like you can kind of work that behind on the wrong side of the work and kind of like make sure that those joined parts are really, really secure. So um, then we move on to the skirt portion of this project. And this is the part that did take much longer because with the style of this apron, now, I do have to talk about the style. The style changed from the visualization process. Originally, when I drew it, the front part of the apron and the skirt part of the apron ran along the same, like, kind of like rectangle that was split by the waistband. Um, and then the skirt kind of came out a little bit. I realized that after drawing that, that I just wasn't buying it. So I decided to change it up a little bit and you're gonna see that I have marked these with start and stop points of the skirt in much wider parts than I did with the top part of the apron. I am glad I did this. I have really come to like a lot of apron styles where the skirt kind of covers the side of your pants and your hips as well as the front of your lower half. I like that because sometimes when I'm leaning against my stove in my kitchen, when I'm reading, rereading a step of a recipe or something, my stove's not necessarily super clean when I'm cooking and things splatter and get onto the front of the stove. And so I found that actually when I do that and I'm leaning against the stove or the wall or whatever in my kitchen, I tend to get stuff on the side of my pants or on the side of my skirt, whatever I'm wearing underneath. So I wanted to create this, adjust the pattern to the skirt starting much farther out from both sides of the top of the apron. And I think this actually visually looks better. So that's why you'll see me here have different, use different, um, the stitch markers are much farther apart here. Um, again, the Alpine stitch was kind of increased at the same fashion as the top of the apron. And I think it turned out really, really well. Um, gosh, the stitch definition of this is so, oh, it just gives me so much joy. I cannot tell you how much joy I got from this. It's just incredible. Um, I don't know, I'm in love with stitches. And then we have um, the border of the top and the bottom of the apron. Now the border here was a little harder to figure out. Um, I do find that it's easier to border crocheted things. If you're, if you're doing rows and then you wanna create a border round, I think it's easier to do that if your stitches are either really closely knit together or if you have um, single crochet rows because I can easily find the end of each row when I only have one chain as a turning chain. So um, this wasn't as hard for me. Um, the scalloping for the edging wasn't as hard for me either. I really enjoyed doing that. I love edging. I think it's really pretty. I think edging needs to be on more things than just like blankets and granny squares and things like that. So I had a, I had a great time. The, the whole Mrs. Nesbitt look already kind of made it clear that there needed to be a scalloped edging on this whole pattern. So I added that scalloping and then I included that watermelon color, that hot pink color, into the edge of the stitches of the scallops. And it's interesting that when I created the, first created the scallops, um, that they're like every other three stitches or whatever, the scallops themselves, like to make that shape, they were, they were actually kind of like not laying flat next to each other. And I was kind of nervous about that, but then when I added the watermelon edging to the top of those scallops, 
it naturally flattened out the scallops so that it actually looked like a semicircle. Uh, before it was like this crumpled sad looking lettuce leaf and then adding that it just made it so much more prettier So I'm really happy that that worked out So anyway, so that edging ended up working out really nicely and it ended up being extremely pleasing to the eye visually and then moving right along we move on to the halter top of this this actually I had to go back and look at a bunch of different apron fasteners like this so that metal fastener that's on the side of the strap on the halter neck part I had to look at um, a couple of different aprons luckily the people I live with um, Holly she has like a million aprons and they're all fabulous she has like one for every theme of the year every holiday she's got them all and she is always looking good in the kitchen so I was lucky enough to be able to go into her stash of sewn aprons and see the different types of fasteners that are used now the fastener that I chose was actually thankfully the easiest one to work with so you're gonna see me um, towards the end of this video kind of take a really long um, fastened off piece of the yarn um, left over from the last stitch in that halter row and you're gonna see me use that to go back in and sew anytime that I can use the yarn itself from the project and use that to sew instead of like thread and a needle is awesome because lesson thread can get dramatic thread can get clogged up in itself it gets stuck in the fibers of the yarn thread is not always our friend y'all thread sometimes is on the other side of the playing field but maybe I just say that because I'm not a sewer and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just kind of winging it as I go but um, I definitely love using that to um, attach the fastener and then slipping that right in through there just so much easier than I thought it would have been. I did um, frog the halter top a couple times because I was playing around with the length of the longer strap. I was also playing around with um, how, just how, th how thick the width of the strap needed to be because the fastener itself is an inch long, um, but yarn is squishy, so you can kind of like squeeze it up in there and you know, like. I think if it's too small, the width is too small, then it will slip right out and it won't be, you'll have to like, you know, tie it like a, I don't know, it'll be crazy looking. But I had to play around with that width because that for me was very important to make sure that it was functional. So let's go ahead and talk about this heart. The heart is the center of the pattern. And the heart, I literally had to make this off camera, guys. I'm sorry you're not seeing a sped up version of me crocheting this, but this heart was just, at this point, I was so tired of filming. I mean, sometimes because, I don't know if you know this about like filming stuff from overhead, but like you have to do it in a way where you're crocheting like this. And I never crochet with my elbows out. I always crochet like this like underneath myself because that's just natural for me to have. This is my green zone, this is my red zone. Any of my Disney friends, you know what I'm talking about. Crocheting like this for so long just kills my elbows and at this point, my phone was dying, I had no battery left in it and I was just whatever. So this is my excuse as why you're not seeing this heart crochet but I promise you I did it. This heart was really cute. Again, I used that hot watermelon color. Um, I had to frog it like at least four times because at first I started by creating it from the point up um, and then I realized that wasn't working um, and it was kind of looking like really like the holes and the increases were getting really crazy so I actually did it from the middle down and then I went back in and crocheted the tops of the heart um, and then you do see me here I am sewing it and I'm sewing it and I am you know, I, I went back and forth, do I want to make this a pocket or do I want to make this just like an embellishment applique on the front and then add a little stones to it. Like, I kind of was undecided until right when I started to film attaching it. And to me, I started sewing it and I was like, you know what, this looks just so much better just as a pocket and I loved how it turned out in the end. I did. Um, sew up the sides as far as like the, where it, the decreases started at the top of the heart So that is optional if you go to create this pattern and or not create this pattern But if you go to make this pattern and you find that you want um, 
less of that, then that's up to you. Like a lot of the stuff that I make, like I hope that you guys can take it and be inspired by it and say, you know what, I like what you did here and I'm just gonna tweak it just a little bit. I think everybody deserves to tweak stuff every now and then. I think, you know, there's a lot to be learned from trying stuff on your own. So um, definitely use this as a springboard if something else inspires you from this do that but still credit me you know because I did a lot of work here um, but yeah use use your intuition if you want to tweak something definitely tweak it I also have listed in the pattern like if you want to if you have a really long torso and you're like you know what I am like six foot seven and I play basketball and I like cooking in my spare time and I like this pattern I want to crochet it but I'm really long and it's not long enough for me I have listed in the pattern um, what rows you can repeat for longer length um, because I am like Tinkerbell size, I'm five foot three, barely, and my torso is very short compared to most people. So this pattern is made to be bigger on me, but still fit me, and that halter strap kind of like helps me adjust that length, um, but you can definitely adjust it within the pattern. There's enough um, repeat room for you to make it longer or to even make it shorter. If you're smaller or you wanna make this for like a child, you can definitely do that. So definitely do that if you ever have questions on how to adjust the pattern like to kind of fit your needs please message me and ask me like I would love to answer any of your questions and then the last step I did with this pattern um, this is 110% optional by the way you don't have to rhinestone anything you make I again like I said I'm going back to my maker roots where I was rhinestoning anything and everything I could because I just thought that Tinkerbell wasn't adding enough pixie dust in my life. Um, but you don't have to do this step. I chose to rhinestone because to me that gave me those little details on the scallops um, and they made it, it looked much more girlier this way. Oh, and guys, I have to talk about the scare that I almost had. And it was almost my, like, not clickbait, but it was almost the title of my video. As I was, like, lack of sleep and trying to make sure that I had everything lined up to start filming and all this stuff, and I was starting to, like, get my all my materials together, I ordered online from one of my favorite retail companies online for embellishments. It's called All, all Star Company. Um, all Star Company. Blech. I can't talk. But uh, this company creates a lot of, um, so it, it, it's comparable to like Dreamtime Creations, which is a big supplier of Swarovski rhinestones and crystals. Um, but this company is like l not Swarovski brand, so they have much more affordable. So I like using them. I use their jewels for my Jasmine ear warmer headband and fingerless gloves. I've used them for other side projects as well. Um, they tend to really, um, have fast delivery and whatever. So I ordered stones from them to use on this project because as I was experimenting with those scallop stitches on the edging, I was trying to like use color changes as well to get that hot pink kind of shell look um, in between each stitch, but I just couldn't figure out a way to make the stitches work where it looks clean enough. So I said, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go back to my roots. And I remember when I first started my Etsy shop, I was using a lot of rhinestones to complete the look or make it look a little bit dazzled, a little extra Disney magic. So I went back to my old roots as a designer, as a designer, and I ordered some rhinestones from the All Star Company. Now, my stupid butt, I forgot to order them through my normal login account with their company. I normally order them with my business email and like so I have everything trackable and it's easy for me to remember and write it down in my books. Um, but I didn't order them through that. I just ordered it through like a guest account, like a guest login. And so because of that, I lost track of this package and I had no idea where it was. It was literally getting to be like, I feel like five days ago when I was gathering my stuff to like go back home so I could film and I was like, I don't know where these rhinestones are. And literally the next day, as I was about to leave, they arrived at my doorstep. So I almost didn't have rhinestones for this project. It was almost actually going to be incomplete and I was gonna release like this whole like second video and I didn't wanna do that. So I'm very glad these rhinestones came back to me. I'm very happy for that. So subconsciously I ordered them correctly, but I didn't order them through the right avenue that I should have been. So anyway, that was a little side story. I almost had a rhinestone, the great rhinestone scare of 2019. 
yeah, so uh, I decided to add rhinestones to this. Now, I the type of glue that I use is actually a great glue. Um, I learned about this trick because I have a great friend of mine, her name is Darlene. Darlene, this is your shout out, love you, mean it. Uh, my good friend Darlene is like, she should be a professional rhinestoner. She is like amazingly good at it. She can do wine glasses, she does all kinds of stuff. But anyway, she taught me a long time ago to buy this glue called E6000 glue. And it's a flexible glue. So when it dries, it's not just like a rock, like it actually still moves with whatever it's on. So it's perfect for fabric and woven things. Um, so if you're ever adding an embellishment or a rhinestone to a project and you want to use a glue that's not going to harm, first of all, harm the material, second of all, burn the material, like have a weird like burning situation. Like I've seen glues like, like basically disintegrate fabric before. If you're not looking for that and you want something that's pliable and um, dries and it's more permanent, E6000 glue is a really great glue. If my method is, is that, and I learned this from my friend, I put a dab of it on a plate. Uh, I use a ceramic plate so I can easily peel the dried glue off later. Um, and then I get a ball pointed um, needle a little bit of glue on the end of the needle and then I would touch it to the back of the rhinestone and then I can use my finger to kind of like slide it off and add the glue to the rest of the rhinestone as I'm placing it at the same time. That's kind of like my method, um, but once you pull that needle away and you're working with the glue with the needle, it gets kind of spidery, spider webby. The, the glue continues to go and go and go. So um, just watch out for your makes when you're using it because you don't want that webbing, that spider webbing of the glue to get on everything and then you're like having to deal with, you know, picking glue out of your stitches. That's not a way I'd like to, I feel like that's worse than weaving in your ends, you know, having to pick glue off of your stuff. So keep that in mind, the glue is great but it does get a little spider webby. All right, guys. Well, that's it for season one, episode two of Crochet Chronicles. I hope you guys loved this video. I had a fabulous time making it, uh, and I always have a fabulous time crocheting. So please stay tuned for future episodes. Again, if you would like to and you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And then as always, as all good YouTubers say, leave a comment below with anything you loved from this video. Please hit subscribe down below for more YouTube videos from Crochet Chronicles and hit the bell button to let you know when I'm making the next video and it's out and ready for you. Um, you can find any of my patterns on Ravelry as well as Etsy and I'd love to be friends with you on Instagram and Facebook so please find me there. I hope we can become crochet friends and thank you so much for supporting me in what I do in my maker life and I hope you were entertained today. Uh, yeah, are we best friends yet? I hope so. If I can finagle this camera. Blech. Same row back and forth like you're eating corn on the cob. Eating willy nilly. Yeah. Pew pew! I'm like shooting a gun when I'm crocheting because I'm like, giggle, giggle, giggle. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Weird noises. This is what it finally looks like. Thank you for waiting. I'm a baby yarnaholic. Flick the little like glue buggers off. I'm in love with the stitches. Oh, they hook and they crochet, they hook and I'm in love with the stitches. Quotes are very necessary for me to know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Not that song. I'm singing it badly. Hooky hook. Chop, 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 chop.